This is week two of the blockchain webinar. I'm the host, Matthew Sudejas. I'm excited to be with a group of people who want to learn about blockchain and the encompassing world of that, which is NFTs, cryptocurrencies, mining, learning about digital wallets, and a lot of new Web 3.0 stuff. Uh, and this group I'm with today is here with me for the second week to just talk shop about uh, these different things that involve blockchain and NFTs and such. One thing that I did learn between last week and this week is how to simplify the definition of blockchain. And I wanted to share that. Um, so if somebody was to ask me, what is blockchain? I would now say blockchain is a place that stores digital transactions. And what is a digital transaction? A digital transaction is an agreement between two parties. And this agreement is a set of promises that both parties agree to. So again, a blockchain in simple terms is um, a place where digital transactions are stored. And so a digital transaction could be an agreement that somebody's gonna give somebody $30 and the other person is gonna send a phone case through the mail in a box to that person. So we know how to right now do digital transactions through eBay and Amazon and Etsy and, and so forth. But in this new world where there's no intermediate uh, intermediate centralized company, it just could be me and Ryan connecting with each other. And Ryan agrees that he'll send me a phone case and I agree that I'll pay him $30. And neither one of us want to do that first, right? Sometimes eBay or Amazon will hold the money until Ryan sends the item. And then once I get the item, then I am, uh, and then Ryan is paid, and I get the item, and 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 things like that. So I wanted to share that because just simplifying some of these terms, I think, is going to be key to understanding and helping other ears understand these things. So blockchain, a place that stores digital transactions, uh, that is something I wanted to share. Uh, anything in this group? Did you learn something between last Wednesday and this Wednesday that's maybe noteworthy? um i've been deep deep diving I, it's taking over my brain <laughs> um i recently got a one of those vr quest 2 headsets um so i can go see what's going on i'm not much of a gamer but i was curious what's going on in, in the metaverse or whatever mm -hmm. and boy oh boy my perception on things is changing mm-hmm so what about yeah. the metaverse like made you well it seems it? like it's all going to be ran off of you know cryptocurrencies and mm -hmm. blockchain and all that so mm -hmm. it's like it's just, for me so far it's like it's you know it's a world that's just starting maybe not just starting to get created but whatever it, it's a world that is outside of the physical here and you know, not, you're not using dollars, you're using cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. um, that is really fascinates me. So what type of cryptocurrencies do you use in these <laughs> games? Sure. So I, I haven't really purchased much or used it, but I've been going into a lot of uh, Sandbox and, um, and Decentraland and Axie, whatever that one is. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, limited or something. So it's like, it's where they're making, you know, their own metaverses where they have, you could buy different plots of land where that comes into, you use, you know, the cryptocurrencies to buy these mm -hmm. plots of land. And then, you know, eventually you'll be able to like hop in your headset, come to my property and I, my property, maybe you have to pay to get in with cryptocurrencies, you know, and then inside there it could be any of this art i've collected it could be a you know it could be a the first thing i had in mind i was like if i was to buy a property in the metaverse and i was to like make something there i was thinking like a scavenger hunt you know because mm -hmm. you have to search come onto my property and make all like leave you clues and stuff maybe it costs a little tiny bit you know a dollar in cryptocurrency whatever to mm -hmm. play and then if you find, you know, the lucky hidden golden pot, you get some type of NFT or prize. It's, mm. I don't know, I can't expand on it much, but I, cause I've just been getting into it this last week, but there is some opportunity, it seems. I, yeah, so what mm. I've learned about 
the metaverse and kind of what fascinates me is the in-game purchases mm -hmm. uh, that is all going to be cryptocurrency so like the sandbox you're talking about the sandbox is like a metaverse that is kind of like minecraft or like a place where people can go and build it's like sims where you can go build a life or build a um, you know world around you if you will and then you're using the cryptocurrency of sand so within the game you so a lot of people like i know snoop dogg is buying a lot of sand and he's buying land and these in-game purchases might seem strange if, if, if there's no gamer if you're not a gamer but in-game purchases have been happening for a super long time and back in 2009 when farmville was alive and well on facebook the primary demographic for that was 40 to 60 year olds that were paying money to facebook to buy more sheep for their farm so the aspect of buying things for digital use has been around for you know over a decade so that's why i think it's so seamlessly going to be integrated where they're gonna you know the metaverse is gonna attack the market of gamers who already know how to involve themselves in a virtual world and then making them buy not making them but having the availability for people to buy things all in cryptocurrency um so I, yeah there's sand and there's other um cryptos there was something i saw recently that was like meta flicks Mm -hmm. It was kind of like Netflix, but if you log into Metaflix, then you get to see, or it's like Netflix in terms of where you, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to um, watch this show? You want to watch The Office? Do you want to watch National Geographic? But in the Metaflix, it's like, do you want to go to Sandbox or do you want to go to Minecraft or do you want to go to Facebook Horizon? And then when you're in your headset, you get to choose like, where you want to go. So I also have been diving into the metaverse. I think that's super, super interesting and definitely a deep hole. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Her uh, Facebook or Meta now, Facebook by Meta, um, just just came out with the Horizon Worlds on the VR headset. It must have been, I don't know, a few days ago, like three or four days ago. So it's like, this is happening now is what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. Like I've already um, like, you know, played paintball with real people. And I'm like, standing around in my living room and like getting dizzy doing 360s because I forget where I'm at um it it's crazy it's like I I went to a party on Saturday night like a, a get together and there's probably 15 20 people there and nobody's ever had a one of those VR headsets on um so I give everybody a little experience I like you know after drinks were flowing I, I took them like into a chair in a room and and kind of let them explore the VR and kind of ex explained how cryptocurrency is going to work into it the best I know, which isn't the best, but every single person that I showed was like, this is the future cryptocurrency metaverse, blah, blah, blah. So it's <laughs> like, and, and all of them are not, you know, the type you would think would be interested. None of them have even tried VR. None of them knew anything about cryptocurrencies really. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was like a fresh group of people and, I don't know. I think global adaption is going to happen pretty quick. I think VR is going to speed it up very fast. Yeah, the, something else I heard that I didn't even think about the other day was to talk about the Omniverse. Have you heard about the Omniverse? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the Omniverse, I know. Yeah, get ready. The Omniverse is a, is a, replica, a virtual replica of our physical world. So just like how there's Google cars driving around and taking pictures of everything so we can look on Google Maps. So now those cars are creating like a virtual representation to scale of our physical world. So one day we'll be able to go to the Omniverse. And then if you want to go to like Mount Everest, like you will be able to go to Mount Everest in the Omniverse and be able to climb the mountain and like it'll have the to scale all the crevices and everything. I think um, so NVIDIA is heavily involved in that. Really? You have? Yeah, I, I think so. If I remember correctly, NVIDIA yeah. has like a big stake in that. Mm -hmm. Do you have any additions or any? I just I just know because my partner is slight, ever so slightly invested in mm -hmm. NVIDIA stock. And so he reads and looks at all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he had he was playing a video on on the omniverse like somebody explaining omniverse and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's how I feel. It's a lot to it like. Lot. <clears throat> I responded to your LinkedIn mm, mm -hmm. thing that you posted, I think yesterday or last yeah. night or yeah, last in the night. last 24 hours and and said that, you know, I'm kind of I lean in the very direction of visual learning mm -hmm. because if I read about all of this stuff or even hear about it, it's it just it's just like this. It's just, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but if I can see visual representation of the mm -hmm. concept or idea that is being talked about, or I have an analogy that just kind of like pairs with something that I already tr like understand, mm -hmm. then I can get my mind around it. Yeah. But otherwise, it, it's just so hard for me to understand. And last week I was reading, I mean, I keep hearing about IoT, 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 you know, mm -hmm. the Internet of Things, right, which has been around for a long time. But I didn't really understand at all. I just mm. didn't understand, didn't understand. And finally, I Googled, explain the Internet of Things like I'm a kindergartner. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to do it. <laughs> I did. It's <laughs> like, please, somebody. And I finally found a YouTube video of somebody breaking it down mm -hmm. like I'm five years old. So yeah. I can understand this concept. And and it's not because I'm stupid. It's just no. that that's how I comprehend things. Mm -hmm like this because they're really abstract ideas and things and yeah. <laughs> yeah so i have a hard time learning things that i can't see or touch also and i'm a visual learner and i learn with my hands so yeah I'm, yeah and i'm also struggling with that too and that's why i posted linkedin sometimes i really have to read things three four times to really understand like what especially if i can't see it and learn yeah. about blockchain smart contracts and even coding, like dealing with computer software. It's like, I can't see the software. I mean, I can see what comes on the screen, but I know what you mean. There's like a mental block that really has to like <laughs> try to get past. And people get so frustrated with me who can just pick up a, a thing and read it. Mm. And they're like, oh yeah, I get it. And I'm like, <laughs> and yeah, and my partner, he, he does that. He can just read these things and listen to them. And he's like, yeah, I get it. And I'm like, sitting there like I don't understand and he'll explain it to me and be immersed like, in it. No, you get it right and I'm like no yeah no just be <laughs> ready to die so mad <laughs> like, I'm sorry <laughs> get the chalkboard and <laughs> draw some pictures yeah that's how I feel I got my whiteboard that's constantly gone right mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly <laughs> Um, oh, boy. oh, I got so, Len Morgan in. Was that right? So there's one uh, thing I've kind of been, I did a lot of looking at last night. I was up to like three or four a.m. just because I oh, couldn't yeah. couldn't stop. Um, so in some games, uh, like Decentraland or like Sandbox, which is you know this metaverse, this world outside of the physical, um, there's different ones. So it seems as if there's going to be like the competition of which one's going to be raining. So it seems like right now what I'm getting is that the two most popular are Decentraland, which is, you know, this mm -hmm. metaverse, which I'm understanding as being the oldest one out there. Um, mm -hmm. So it's got a lot of users. And then now there's Sandbox, which is newer. It's, you know, it's just mm -hmm. a dip, same thing, different, different program. Um, and this one's getting all the new influencers like Dead Mouse and Snoop Dogg and, um atari even you know mm -hmm. like getting big names so i'm trying to figure out which i'm gonna go on both models of the metaverse and i'm gonna mm -hmm. you know explore both um and then there's one interesting thing inside of them so each one is ran off of their own currency which is a cryptocurrency mm -hmm. so you have sandbox which is ran off of sand and then decentraland which is ran off of it's called mana uh -huh. I believe. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I found super interesting is that, you know, when you think of people playing video games and gaming, you're not, you know, you're not getting any 
profit out of it, right? You're not getting, oh, you're playing the game. So you're getting experience. You're getting like an, an experience and fun and maybe communication with other people. Now, what these metaverse worlds are doing are allowing people the game to earn cryptocurrency while in their game. So it's a play to earn model of gaming inside this metaverse that doesn't have to be only gaming. You know, it could be a metaverse where we go and we watch movies together. It, we can go to a church group, you know, there's so many, like a work group office. So it's not all focused on gaming, but if you are interested, you can go in these metaverses, you can play the games in Decentraland, you can play the games in Sandbox, and through playing these games and usually investing money into you know, buying better characters to play these games, mm -hmm. it gives you the opportunity to earn these crypto coins. So, oh, right? So this is the one that I was looking at most recently. Um, it is on Sandbox. Uh -huh. And they have this thing, it's called the Alpha Pass. So what the Alpha Pass does, you can go online and buy it from OpenSea, I believe. Let's see what the price is right now. It's probably like six grand. Oh, you have it there? Cool. Let mm -hmm. you pull it up. I'm just going to go to Sandbox. Um, can you look up Alpha Pass price? On OpenSea, you said? Yeah, I think. Alpha Pass? Alpha Pass. You know which mm. one? Alpha pass, maybe the very top item. Oh, the uh, top the item. Yeah. So what are these again? So once it shows up, I will oh yeah. Give it a little explanation if if that's it. I imagine that's where you can see yeah, it. So the that. there's gonna be a price on it, and the price is gonna probably be around six thousand US dollars mm -hmm. at the moment. I don't know. I haven't looked this morning if crypto has been moving. So maybe it's up or down. Um, so you, you buy this, you buy this alpha pass for, you know, five, 600 us dollars, but you're going to pay for it in cryptocurrency in Ethereum probably. Mm -hmm. Um, but to get Ethereum, you're going to need us at the start. So if you don't have it, so you buy one of these and then it's like six grand. And what it does is it gives you, um, the opportunity to have, experience 14 i think different little mazes and quizzes and stuff um you could complete all 14 of these in a night so you're paying you know this five grand six grand to buy this you get to do these experiences and once you finish these experiences which can take you one night you will receive a thousand sand mm. um which is you know the the currency that runs um mm that runs Sandbox. So let's see what sand price is right now. So sand price right now is 447 per sand. So you get a thousand. So basically once you finish this, you're gonna recoup 4,400, it just went down a penny, $4,460. So that means it's probably a thousand dollars that you will lose from buying this alpha pass um but when you also get when buying the alpha pass is three nfts that are very special that mm -hmm. you will only be able to get until december 20th which is five days from now so in five days this alpha pass goes away um, really so this will not no longer be an option they will probably make a different um like another version of it but this specific alpha pass will go away, which means that the three NFTs, which are like, I think you get a sword or you get like, you know, something mm -hmm. that your avatar in this world will be able to carry. Uh -huh. um, I don't exactly know what the NFTs are. I'd have to look at, but I know they are special when you get three of them, you'll have those and nobody else after December 20th is going to be able to have those. That's good. Yeah, that could be worth a lot. Which, you know, in 10 years, if Sandbox is the, the main metaverse, those three things that you got way back, you know, today, mm -hmm. before the 20th, those, who knows, you know, maybe they're worth nothing. Maybe they're worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Who knows? Yeah, well, those first to market launches, like the Crypto Kitties, the, you know, the, what is it? The Crypto, uh, the Crypto Punks, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the first NFTs, 
get a lot of hype and get a lot of you know movement because it's the first and then once the drop's done it's it's done so i think that is a play six thousand dollars that's a lot yeah for, but are, are you thinking about the pass um no uh no, i'm not i am it's gonna a lot take, of scratch it's yeah. a lot of scratch <laughs> I just um, lost a thousand dollars in crypto <laughs> because of, because everything's down right now. Yep. I mean, yeah. I haven't lost it. It's just mm -hmm. it, it's that my down. portfolio <laughs> is down by fifty yeah. percent from where I started. Yeah. So you know, I just have to sit and wait and hope that it goes back up eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm not thinking of doing it. Um. But just really because I'm I'm just getting into it, you know. I've been yeah. really, really researching this stuff for the past, I don't know, week or so. Mm -hmm. And you know, the first day of my research, maybe a week ago, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get this. It's you know, it's five grand, it's for this thing. Mm -hmm. And and then I do another mm -hmm. few hours of research and I'm like, oh, or I can do this. I can sign up for the alpha pass. It's five grand. And then it's you know, there's so many different options of of things you can do. Well, I just, no. I'm, yeah. Before I spend I big bucks, it, oh, I want to really know, you know, kind of have an idea of what I want to spend it on. Yeah, because I know Decentraland came out in 2015, and it's been around for a while, mm -hmm. uh, and people are still buying land. I know land in Decentraland is also six thousand dollars, and it's even more. Own, if you own land in Decentraland and then you stake the land. Then you're able to vote within Decentraland, and then so Decentraland has um, like a voting, like oh, we think our, you know, stake stakeholders should you know get ten percent stake instead of nine percent stake. Like everybody vote on that. Like everybody in Decentraland mm -hmm. can actually vote, so you can become a part of like a democracy or part of a system within a blockchain universe if you own buy land now and stake the land and. Mm -hmm. I know what land right next to Snoop Dogg just went for half a million dollars because Snoop Dogg bought a plot of land and then, you know, people want to have land next to Snoop Dogg, of course. And then, so uh, yeah, land is definitely being swooped up right now. Yeah. And there's like a limited supply of land. It's like a world, right? There's not unlimited land on earth. So the land will probably eventually all be gone someday, I imagine. Yeah. And when you, let's say when land does, there's no more land to be purchased then it's you know it's like the real world what happens when let's say all the land in california is purchased how do you mm -hmm. live there how do you live in california when all the land is already owned you offer somebody a really high price you, have you to rent be rich. you rent you rent oh, rich. Right? rent mm -hmm. you rent so if you buy a plot of land you know in oh my the, god you can rent this land, land out you rent the land out so 30 years from now, you know, you don't have to build on the land. You don't, you don't have to be a computer, you know, building person. You don't know how to build things. You just rent it out to some designer that knows how, because there's going to be a designer that wants the land so that he can make his experience in the metaverse. Mm -hmm. so, so he's going to go out and say, Hey, you, Ryan, didn't you buy that plot of land a long time ago? I'm going to say, yep. So you want to sell it? I'm going to say, no. He's like, do you want to rent it out to me for, you know, a two year contract? Sure, I'll rent it out to you for two oh, years for rent it out. whatever the price is, and I will get it back. And because it's on the blockchain, everything's, you know, we know exactly what's happening with everything, and there won't be a problem, hopefully, in the mm -hmm. ideal world. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's how blockchain works, right? <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> in an ideal world. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, in an ideal, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Marley. How you doing? Pretty good. Are you talking about uh, Decentraland or Sandbox? Uh, a little bit of both, but we kind of ended on Decentraland there, and now I'm looking at the website. Nice. Yeah, do you know anything about Decentraland, or are you, you inspired to buy land at all? Uh, I haven't looked into that one. I've mostly seen uh, stuff on Sandbox. Oh, nice. You got any cool insights on Sandbox? uh i'm just in the discord and like the owner of the or the guy who started it bought a piece of land in the sandbox mm. yeah I and mean, he has like he's gonna do like carnival games on it mm -hmm. 
carnival games. Okay. Yeah, I know. I've seen like some gambling or some sort of, yeah, games within games as in like, yeah, making money games. So like almost gambling, but in a way different. Yeah. There is gambling. There's casinos you can go to and lose all your money. Yeah. Win. Yeah. Um, what I'm getting, I don't know. I mean, in my, you know, week of research is that the things tend to be shifting towards sandbox at this moment. That's what I'm getting. There's a lot of new, because it's so new and the hype and so Robux, Robux, do you know what Robux are? Mm-hmm. So Robux are like a, a currency kind of that is in, that you can use to buy things in um, sandbox or certain games. So I was watching a video and this woman was saying that her son for Christmas coming up uh, her 10 year old son doesn't want Christmas present. He was like, No, I want a whole bunch of Robux so I can buy a game, so I can buy things in, within the sandbox. And so this little kid, this little 10 year old kid, wants a whole bunch of Robux, which is just digital money, little coins. You know, I don't know if it's one for one, one dollar, one Robux, but Marley, do you know anything about Robux? I don't. Is that, is that a game or another? It's like a, uh, it's like a currency numbers? within, it's like a currency within sandbox. So Robux is like what kids are using to buy gold or buy little houses or buy little, you know, swords or hut or armor or something. Oh, I thought that was the sand coin they were using. Or the sand yeah. coin, yeah, is for the sandbox. I don't know if Robux. Are you sure you're not for... thinking Roblox? Oh yeah, I am thinking Robux. Thank you. So there's Roblox and then there's Robux. So Ro yeah, thanks, Ryan. So Roblox is like <laughs> a kid friendly metaverse yes. let me let me bro block it's another one of those things you know i think it's like to central and like uh like um sandbox but it's not it's roblox and so look look how kid see age birthday in the back you can see like lego characters ish Let's see, when's my birthday? February 10th, sure. I was going to say you're too old. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Only for 18 and under. <laughs> uh, <what>? yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, Meta. <laughs> uh, swoop that name. You could sell that later. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's funny. Come on, I want in the Robux. Here. I am so late to the party. <laughs> okay, so here as you're in Robo Roblox, you can go you can click on different games. Mm-hmm. And some of these are yeah, fashion shows. Some of them you take photos of food. I saw one where like you have different meals in front of you and you gotta angle the camera and get a good picture of the food. And like while it's still hot and everything, it's so funny. It's so silly. <laughs> All these little kid games, like escaping the running head. Are you kidding? Um, but this, so this is like the kid friendly version of Metaverse. I feel like this is really getting a lot of youth in, mm-hmm. into you know buying things and using the Robux. Um, and then you know by the time they're our age or they're you know they'll have so much experience with. Um, look next updates huge they already know about drops they know about discords I just feel like the youth are really getting um, taught how to do some of these things that we're talking about wow yeah so ro- roblox is like the kid friendly sandbox crazy um, can I can I oh, yeah. sort of sort of get off topic, but maybe not off topic? Oh yeah, please. No, there's it's all on topic. Um it's it's about NFTs. Yeah. Please. Um because I went in there last week. Um yeah, to open C and, and uh-huh. kind of snooped around a little bit. Yeah. Um so the art in here, is it all is it all digital art or like I'm an artist, but I'm like, I do acrylic art, right? Mm. Like actual physical 
you know, you hey, me too. With your, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> with paint and stuff. Yeah. Um, That's a very good question. You know, epoxy resin. Something you can touch. <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. So does that translate to to this? Like, so it, it can. And it's that concept thing again. So when if I just go to maybe my profile, when you do create, oh sorry, one second. So each NFT comes with like these properties. And so if you were to create an NFT of one of your art paintings, like if you took a picture of your painting and then mm -hmm. you could post that picture of your painting on OpenSea, and mm -hmm. then you can put in the properties that if you buy this, uh, if you buy this NFT, it'll also come with a physical copy of this painting. And so when, when somebody buys it, you know, they would then give you your, the address and then you would then ship your item. So you can use you can use OpenSea as a source to like buy virtual and buy physical goods. You just got to make sure that you're putting in the properties and like the unlocked content that you know you'll hold your word of sending that item. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. something you can do that kind of combines the virtual reality and a physical NFT, or like you're talking about, is so if I did buy a plot of land in one of these metaverses, which are like twelve grand right now. Um, and let's say I did make the game and my, the game I made on my property was, uh, it was a scavenger hunt, you know, a really hard scavenger hunt takes, you know, weeks for someone to figure it out. You know, everyone, people online start saying like, Hey, there's a scavenger hunt. It's really difficult and fun. More people start playing my scavenger hunt. Right. So it's getting more traction. All of a sudden somebody finds it. They find the secret chest inside the chest can be that acrylic painting that you showed there um you know it could you could call it whatever you would like to call it they win it they get that they can get it in the physical form delivered to them you know but they also get it in a you know a form online so they can take it to if they have you know somewhere in the metaverse their home area they can put it up on their wall you know like i they can put I uh, if they were like, hey, that's awesome. I want you to keep this acrylic painting NFT that they won because there's only one of them. There's only one of those things that you made, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can put that up in, you know, on the wall here. And next to it, I can put a picture of whoever found it. And, you know, so it's like you can translate from creation to from creation in the physical to application in the metaverse. That's what I'm thinking. I had a question. Yeah, Morgan. So I'm on Flipkick, who is supposedly the only company to offer cryptographic authentication of physical works for mm -hmm. the NFTs. And they're saying that, so you buy the NFT or you could redeem it for the physical work. Does that mean that, you know, like she would keep her acrylic artwork and then who is responsible for ensuring that and making sure that there's no accidents or where it's stored or anything like that. Yeah, and so like, cause if, what if the NFT sells again then does that person have to send it? Is that what you're saying? Like who's gonna keep it safe? Well, the website makes it seem like you only get the NFT. You don't get the physical piece of work unless you redeem the NFT. Can you put a link okay. for that in yeah. the chat? Yeah, and you were saying this was the only place where you can sell physical with the NFT? Is that, did I hear that? That's what the website says, that Flipkick is the only company to offer that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I might have uh, wrong when I said that about OpenSea. Flipkick, huh? It's in the chat, Matthew. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's see what... And so whoever redeems their NFT is responsible for the cost of shipping. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> I mean, ideally what I'd like to do eventually is integrate you know, 
take some of my art and scan it and then integrate digital art over it, right? And, you know, make more art in that form. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, no, that's that's sounds yeah. legit. <laughs> someday, <laughs> someday yeah. like this, right? Have, have when I like have this. more time, because you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my art already consumes. My art is already like another job. Oh my god! They have the fire festival and the cheese sandwich in here. That's funny. Eighty thousand dollars for that. Let's go for the cheese sandwich. And it's sold. So it must have been the guy that took that picture, oh. right? It must have been. Like he has to have that. Oh that yeah, because that is that. the famous picture. <clears throat> Funny. Wow, okay. This is new. That's new to me. Flip kick. If you want to sell <laughs> NFTs physical and virtual, this is so that you can't have an NFT in the physical and in the not physical is what. I'm hearing. I didn't know that. I was like, if you wanted to own the physical, so yeah, Morgan, if you wanted to own the physical, you'd have to like kind of burn the NFT or something. Uh, that you have to redeem it through their website. It says mm. you have to call their New York office. So what I'm wondering is like, if I buy like not NFT, like a Rembrandt painting, right? Mm -hmm. I own that, and I have a certificate that says that I own it, and then I lend it out to like a museum, and they're holding it for me mm -hmm. kind of like if you had the nft and then whoever the artist is is holding your painting like say the museum burns down and it's gone who's responsible mm -hmm. for now i have an nft of just a picture oh you see what i'm saying like yeah. mm -hmm. then i would have a certificate of oh yeah at one point in my life i owned a rembrandt but it you know it doesn't serve me anything now mm -hmm. so i'm wondering what kind of way they're doing like regulating insurance for things that don't exist and that you've never seen or held before. You just bought a piece of paper that said, you know, you own it supposedly. Yeah. It's not yeah. like a traditional NFT where you own the actual digital content. Like you own a physical object, but there's no guarantee that that even exists because an artist could pop out, you know, tons of art and it's in their box in their closet. You own it, but say their house burns down. Mm -hmm. They're not, you know, what if they don't tell you that anything happened? They just go make a new username and there you go. Yeah, so where who would own li the liability in that situation? It's a good question. Something that's, if not figured out, it's gonna be figured out. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So th this, this is what I really have a hard time, like with NFTs, <laughs> I, I, like, I don't understand why somebody would pay a phenomenal amount of money for, a digital asset like art, right? It seems, it seems, it, it seems it's the flex just, factor. It's so you can flex. It's like the kids that spend all the money on Fortnite costumes and stuff. Like right. I wouldn't, I don't spend all I've of never that. Done that. But right, no, all of that just. You want to be like, it's the flex. You want to flex. Flexing so is big. One thing, in the, Kelly, when I think of it, like, so, you know, right, right now there's rappers that'll spend, not just rappers, there's people that'll spend, <laughs> You know, hundreds of thousand dollars on watches, right? On chains, on ice, on their necklaces, you know, yes. expensive, expensive cars and really, you know, thousands of dollars shoes. So like yes. that, the idea of like buying things that are way too overpriced. Yes. So that because you want other people to see your status. I understand. I, I understand I those the things same, because I think they're that's physical. The same thing. Because in the in a way, it's going to trigger the same part of the brain where now a lot of people are seeing our Instagram profiles, our Facebook profiles, and Twitter, and so not a lot of people are seeing our watch or our cars, but we can now flex these like really expensive things on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Like, oh look, I bought this NFT. Like that all of a sudden says like of, that you are such high status. And I think just the status and people caring about what other people think is like the base of why people are spending so much. Yeah. I mean, I, I get, I get that part of it. The, the, like this, the status factor, mm -hmm. but what I don't get is like, again, it's the, the 
digital version or the digital art, right, is something that you cannot touch. You can't hang it in your house. In the metaverse, you can't, you can. like you have to log <laughs> on to a computer or a phone to look at it. Like what? I I don't get the. I mean, I just can't get my mind around the point of it other than as a status of wealth, which mm-hmm. in to me is completely ridiculous <laughs> because I'm a very practical kind of person. Mm-hmm. I, I have a physical house and a physical <laughs> piece of land that I can live in and shelter from this crappy weather Thank you very much. <laughs> like that makes sense to me because this is something like my physical body needs to live in to protect myself. A piece of land in the digital world for $12,000 seems just absurd to me mm. because what is it going to do for me? Like I I want to get on board, I really do, but I don't like, in practical purposes, I only have so many years left to work and earn money. Mm -hmm. And I have to pay for this thing that I'm sitting in or the bank will take it back and then I'm gonna be, you know, living in my car, (laughs) you know? So that's kind of like where I sit with all of this. And and I really do want to understand and like get on board and, and get, in because I feel like there's an opportunity to make money, which in my mind is kind of the objective. Like this whole, you know, universe and omniverse, metaverse, all these places for the mind to go is cool. But at the end of the day, like, we still have to live here, right? In this physical place as well. And those just seem like entertainment, unless I'm wrong. Am I completely missing something? I mean, it's been, okay if I am. <laughs> have you been, have you been uh, like in a virtual reality helmet I have or anything? not, Ryan. I can come over and you can show me. <laughs> come on over. That's what, that's what really brought my interest in it was experiencing some of those things. Um, in there and it made me think like uh, the amount of people that are on let's say Instagram mm-hmm. per day per hours like I am not a gamer I don't I'm not like a gamer or a social media person but yeah I'm still on Instagram maybe a couple hours a day you mm-hmm. know there's people that are on Instagram you know five six seven eight nine ten hours a day <sighs> which is crazy to me um but I think, I mean, how many kids are playing Fortnite, you know, six, seven hours a day, eight hours a day. I think that future generations are going to be, have a lot less time in the reality, which sucks because I love nature and I love like, you know, this physical, but I think we are headed to a a life where people spend a lot, lot more time out of the physical. I just don't think we've I think we're just starting to get there. I don't, it's hard to understand right now, but I think that's going to happen. And I think it's going to happen really fast. Yeah. I mean, I don't band. disagree with that at all, Brian. Um, and, you know, being, being of the, like, I, I, I'm probably the oldest person in the group. <laughs> I'm going to just reveal right now. Um, you know, I'm in my fifties and <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm of a completely different generation and, you know, I remember before the internet, I remember before cell phones, all of those things, like I am of the generation where there was a whole life before all of this. And, and it may be part of the reason why it's very difficult for me to get my mind around these things, but I also you know, see as somebody who's practiced Buddhism and the Dharma for a long time as well, like I see all of this as escapism and just like a way to check out of 
all of everything, you know, in the brain and our thoughts and our feelings and, and everything and not to get completely off topic, but again, that might be why I have such a hard time kind of like getting my mind around it because I've spent, you know, decades trying to get into my brain and into my thought and not escape it <laughs> anymore. So, um, but, but I do want to check it out. I want to check out the virtual reality and I want to check this all out because it does fascinate me and I want to understand because I do, I do believe that it is the future, like you're saying. I, I know, like, we're on a train that cannot be stopped, <laughs> no matter what. Yeah, that's, that's really how it feels. And it's, it's so crazy, anyway. like, the amount of variables, the amount of factors, the amount of things, you know, the Internet of Things is a blockchain of things. Like, there's so, like, where I started this, because I want to talk about blockchain and encompassing that there's nfts there's um you know the virtual world there's virtual reality there's and then now we're talking about video games we're talking about the omniverse and i'm, I'm just eager i'm stoked that there's people that keep wanting to learn with each other because i think if we continue to learn at the rate that we're learning now then i think in a year from now like this will all be much more clear and our investment strategies in this space will be more clear if we do want to make money and build generational wealth the way to do that and build generational wealth 20 years ago was investing in the uh, S&P 500, investing in stocks and companies, mm -hmm. the dot-com. And I think now and going forward, if we're trying to build generational wealth and be able to retire and actually retire comfortably. I think there's things in this space that we could, you know, use to our benefit. And not that I only want to get into NFTs for money, but I do think about myself and my family in the future. Um, so I think, yeah, if, if we have that in mind, if we have good intentions, but also want to like learn and get creative, I think we're going to set ourselves up and it's just weird not knowing what that looks like. It's so much more clear to like, I'm going to invest in property. I'm going to build a house. I'm going to use a hammer and screws and then sell the house. Like that is much more, you know, in my mind doable because I can picture it, but investing in this virtual thing and then getting headset and investing in Ethereum and mining blockchain for a greater life is not as, you know, in quote, doable in my head. But I think if I keep learning, it will become doable. And that's why I'm so excited mm -hmm. for what is the unknown. Does anybody else kind of like feel that at all or the generational wealth building? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to live off my investments by the time I'm 40. So, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to not have a nine to five. I'm trying to not work after that <laughs> so that's kind of why i'm i think there's a really big opportunity to jump in now and that's why i'm i'm starting to look into it mm -hmm. because it's it is the wealth factor um i want to be able to you know support a family later on and whatnot mm -hmm. totally. my family's family and my family's family's family mm -hmm. what about you mad dog what are you marley what are you uh most stoked about this space uh just the flipping aspect uh-huh this yeah did you check out the croaks croaks uh nfts that came out yesterday no i don't what is a new drop what's up with that yeah check it out dude they're pretty pretty sweet yeah how do you spell that can we look it up it's uh c-r-o-a kz and then it's by uh, space and then by and then yeah make, make the 69691 six, nine, six, nine. whoa look at those little things these are fire dude <laughs> so nice. four price of only 0.2 that's not that much <laughs> look at the look volume at it came out yesterday Volume traded. Wow. Oh my god, we should all buy one right now. I don't know about that, but <laughs> pretty pretty funny. Is this you have you followed them on Twitter or Discord? Are they are they're like a, a good looking project? Yeah, I tried to get whitelisted for them, but I didn't make the cut. <laughs> and remind us what whitelisting for a project means. Whitelisted, whitelisting is like how you make the money. They just reserve you an NFT specifically for your 
uh, wallet address. So you don't mm. have, you can like do it whenever the gas fees is the lowest. So when you, if I, if you get on a white list, then you're guaranteed an NFT from that project. Yeah. Like on, only your wallet address can buy it. They just, it's just like safe for you. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So they probably minted these for like under 0.01 and then, or 0.1 and now they're flipping them. For oh, like oh, double the price. I see. Triple. So when you're looking for projects and you're, you know, you knew about this project. And so how did you know about this project and how do you know about, you know, good projects to invest in? Uh, Twitter and YouTube and Discord. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to make a Twitter today. Yeah, Twitter's where it's at for sure. That's that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. Twitter is yeah. I'm in. I just go to the. Yeah, I've never had a Twitter, Twitter, so that's new to me. <laughs> I've never well, had a Twitter Ryan, either. I think me Ryan. Really I successfully good. stayed away. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I like, away on purposely just, didn't want it. <laughs> I find the Twitter space so genuine. If you go into the search bar and you type in NFT, and then you go to the latest post, so not the most popular, but if you go to the latest, then you'll get all these people that are you know, just post about NFTs that have no comments, no likes. They're people begging for attention. And if you, you know, write them, be like, oh, I like your, I like your art. I like your this. Like, this is so cool. Like all of a sudden I've just been doing that and I have like over 10 followers. And I know Marley's been doing that for like over a month now. And you got like hundred followers and you're like doing really well. And so many people send Marley NFTs. Like you send me screenshots of like, oh, I just got a new elephant. Like, oh, I just got a new like whale smoking a cigarette. Like out of just random picture yeah, you can so get fun. a lot of free ones and then that's a good way to start you can flip your free ones and then mm -hmm. you have some uh eth all of a sudden if yeah the so polygon cool. ones you don't have to pay gas so that's cool and you stay around the polygon you like that huh uh i'm starting to migrate to this is an eth one i'm i'm like yeah i think polygon's good to start with like for your free ones and then you can like figure <laughs> it out first mm -hmm. not without paying the gas fees yeah, that's nice. Gas be, can be expensive. Nice, cool, dude. But yeah, those are pretty funny. It's super funny. Matthew, do you want to volunteer to help me get the setup? One of these set up? <laughs> uh, yeah, with an OpenSea account? Yeah. Yeah, we could have a, a talk after or yeah, on another time and you okay. can zoom and set one of these up. That'd be, that'd be really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I went and looked at it last week and I just like started getting really overwhelmed with all of it. And I was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it can be a lot. I, I created my little, my little panda up here and, you know, profile and, and then, you know, I put a little picture and it, it's kind of like creating a little Facebook, but just different. Yeah. We could totally do that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, um, Mar Marley. I, actually I stopped working this years. week for the rest of the year. I'm off work my from my regular job after this week. So, oh, nice. You got time. Yeah, I have a couple weeks to. Okay, cool. I'm myself. on break for school too, uh, and after a week, so we can we'll do it sometime. Sweet. Yeah, so let's get you Thank an account. You. And this is Marley's art. Let's not. We'll 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 leave the session soon here but i want to show you this is marley's art the og fish <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and his name is the goaty fish yeah i'm giving one away right now if you guys want to get in on it dude look at your floor price <laughs> that was someone else who posted that i'm just giving them all free yeah dude. but the purple one on the bottom if you scroll all the way down uh i'm giving that one away right now if if you're interested in entering Wait, what how do i how do you, how would i go about entering yeah uh you just go on my twitter and just uh retweet the pin the pin tweet and then you're, you're in and then you're in guess i'm making a twitter today that's on the list yeah you gotta See, get yeah i have to make a twitter now <laughs> <laughs> oh no i'm getting sucked into the vortex Suck in i know huh <laughs> all right i have to i have to scoot i have a meeting in three minutes for, good, for my job i have to go do my job now <laughs> oh i know you're just thinking about nfts <laughs> all right you guys thanks thank you so much um 
it's it's been a pleasure and um i hope to see you all next week mm-hmm. yeah yeah yes, we'll, see you we'll next be week. here all right take it easy thanks yeah, for kelly okay. thank you <clears throat> hey thanks for coming again morgan i appreciate it yeah yeah hopefully just keep we'll just keep doing these wednesday sessions anybody who shows up we'll just dive into the topics of of the day whatever we're feeling staying around the blockchain ecosystem um do you guys have anything before i anything to say or ask before i cancel or get out of here mm. can you post your twitter somewhere so when we leave i still have it yeah it's uh just oh, search goatee, goatee fish sweet <laughs> Gody underscore fish. Okay, wait. How do I? Okay, there you go. People, Gody. There we go. Okay, just search Gody fish. And then look, ninety-eight followers. Look at this. He's insane. And so when he, I'm, and then he look. He has his OpenSea account. So if I was to click that, I probably would just go straight to his. Yep. So drop your URL, Ryan, for your OpenSea account once you make that. Mm-hmm. And then look, so this is what you do. You have follow, like, and what's RT? How, how uh, did you just, create this? Just retweet, yeah. What did you yeah, use to you, create this? <laughs> what's yeah, that? How, how did what, you did you, what did you do to create this purple guy with the electric thing? Uh, I did Adobe Photoshop and After Effects combo. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> Dude, look at the little rubber Thanks ducky in there, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, badass. That's so funny. Hustle millennial. Yeah, that's a good guy to follow, too. That's where I've been getting all my info. Really? He's a good one? Oh. Nice. Yeah, Ryan, when, I, when I've been trying to figure out what to, like, do on Twitter. I, I just go to the explore and then I, I've been really just going like this and then I go latest. Mm-hmm. And then look at these people have no likes, no comments, no tweets. And and I just go to like somebody's like this. Be like Discord. So I, so I just I'm go still like kind of like the NFT thing is still a little yeah, fuzzy in my up. brain. Um so let's say if, if I won, just stop it, one of them, any NFT here, uh-huh. is that one? Um, or let's say the one that homie here has, Cody Fish yeah. has. Um, so let's say I win that. So I am now basically, I'm the registered owner of that piece of art, correct? Yes, and it would go yeah. into your OpenSea account. And it would go into my OpenSea account. Okay, so what can you attach to that besides just the art? Is there like, can you give me an example? So you can attach a um, unlockable content. Okay. So, so yeah. When I, when I, when I'm creating my pandas, I want to put an unlockable content to a YouTube video mm-hmm. that nobody would have access to unless you buy that NFT. Then you'll okay. get to this YouTube video. So let's say I buy a plot of land somewhere in the metaverse and I, um, and I want to make a scavenger hunt. Um, the scavenger hunt, you know, if you find the chest, you get something really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, really cool. Um, I can make, let's say, 50 scavenger hunt NFTs. And with that, if they own one, then they would get access to be able to enter that scavenger hunt. Would yes, that, does you, that sound you realistic? Could, you totally could do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you add utility, then it's even better for sure. And yeah, and utility, Ryan, is you know what that is, right? Just something that you could use, or a utility is like something that we gain or some value. Yeah. And there's some crazy utility projects coming out. You know, could you Board show Ape me Yacht an example Club. of one with a utility? So Board Board Ape Yacht Club. If you own a Board Ape, then you get access to any of the yacht parties that are actually in Miami. Mm-hmm. And then there's. Oh, uh, be friends. V friends, if you buy a Gary V V friend, then you get access to three of his VCon conferences, VIP mm-hmm. tickets. So his big old conferences. So I think artists soon will release NFTs. And if you buy this NFT, maybe you'll get a free venue ticket 
or mm-hmm. I think, you know, like Starbucks will eventually like, oh, if you buy this golden NFT Starbucks logo, then you get 5% off for the rest of your life. Okay. So if let's say, uh, who's someone popular, let's say Drake, let's say Drake has this new song. Mm-hmm. It's, it's to the people that have heard it. It's really good. So he releases, can he release an NFT to where only the people that purchase the NFT can listen to that song? Dude, that's a great question because yes, and this is happening right now where people, <laughs> artists are releasing music on the blockchain and only on the chain. So you can't go to YouTube, can't go to Spotify. You only can buy them. If you buy the song as an NFT, that's the only place you can ever listen to it. So you're saying that I can't, you know, because I'm really good with, let's say, for instance, I'm really good with all things computer and I buy an NFT of this Drake song. You're saying I can't like find a way to record that song and then send it out to everyone for free. I mean, that sounds well, like it's I mean, pretty- YouTube is pretty easy to like copyright things and like, but not, not necessarily like, or Telegram, like people will, you know, record the song and then post it on Reddit or post mm-hmm. it on YouTube and like maybe go take it out, maybe not. So I think there will, but there will be ways to get around it. Just like there's, you can copyright and not use Spotify. And there was LimeWire back in the day. So yeah, like, like you torrent and things but, like that. But I think the main thing is like artists can now get 100% of their revenue through an art, through selling a song. And, you know, their label isn't going to take 90% of the cut. Um, yeah, but then, then it's going to be harder for an artist to get exposure because they won't have a label. But yes. But I, I mean, if they saying. already, you know, like Tech Nine doesn't have a label and he's pretty big, so he could be releasing stuff on his um, for sure. private. So there's there's ways. But yeah, if me or you create songs on the blockchain, we're not going to get a lot of traffic. But somebody who already kind of has traffic. Yeah. Could work. Mm-hmm. Hey, how do you, I might, I might create traffic one day. <laughs> 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 cool yeah dude that was a good session yeah i'll end it now thanks for coming everybody i'll respect the time i'm gonna head over to another meeting too in a little bit yeah all right thanks Haas. yeah thank you marley thanks ryan yeah thank you yeah hopefully see you two next week for another sesh yep oh yeah i'll be on and- time Yes, and uh, Brian, get a Twitter and and retweet this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, get on the free Twitter stuff. Yeah, I will. Sure. Yeah, there's like a lot of like you know that Alpha Pass thing I was telling you about. Yeah, that looks that, good. I know there's a lot of like you know how it costs like five grand, six grand. There mm-hmm. are a lot of things I've seen like if you follow and retweet this person, you have an opportunity, or like watch this youtube stream you have the opportunity to get it for free so i think there's a lot of free things on twitter there really so i is. think i should get that yeah mm-hmm. so that's something i'm gonna get in on soon yeah diving in another thing another thing another thing all right well it don't stop let's grind it out boys yeah, yeah. all right i'll see you guys soon later yeah. peace <laughs>